Good morning. Thank you. Just stay standing with me. We gotta pray and ask God's grace on this time. Those that are watching live feed, we just welcome you to Life Church 7. The Holy Spirit has a good word for each one of us this morning. I'm just gonna ask this group, would you just lift your hands with me? So Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Your word is a lamp into our feet. It's a light into our path. Pastor Jim said, I seem tense in the first service. So Lord, just take all the tenseness away. <laughs> Welcome your presence. Welcome your goodness. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. We welcome you. We welcome you, Lord. We welcome your word. Yeah, thank you, Father. I thank you in advance for all the freedom that you're going to bring today. Thank you in advance for the new liberty that we find in Christ Jesus. I thank you in advance for the chains that will be broken and your grace and your anointing that will be released in each one of us. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. And everybody said, amen. You can be seated. Pastor Jim is speaking next week, so you can be sure I'll be in the message. So good. When I, last week when we closed the service, um, I just felt prompted from the Lord that we needed to respond to a family that was struggling financially. They were in jeopardy of losing their home. And I just wanted to give you an update that everything that they needed to save their home came in. Isn't that good? So thank you. Yeah. Thank you for responding. That's just... That's such a great report, and I'm so thankful. Thank, what a generous church, and I, I just so appreciate and love the generosity, appreciate each one of you. Our, my desire, and our desire as a pastoral team is to equip you to win, to walk in life and to overcome, to be powerful, to be all that God's designed you to be. Uh, if you're struggling, I can tell you, if you're gonna be here long enough, you're gonna find freedom. You're gonna find joy, you're gonna find peace. Uh, the passage that I'm gonna speak about today is a key passage. It's, it, if I were to describe something as the core of the gospel, it would be the passage that I'm gonna talk about today, and I'll get to that in a minute. My big idea today is, uh, because you belong to Christ, Christ's spirit now lives in you. Belonging is so important. And I, I've had people often say, you know, I, I've come to church or wherever I'm at, I, I feel alone. I feel lonely. Or um, one of my favorite programs is watching Alone every year. I've watched all eight seasons. And um, I just, my, in fact, my wife and I watch it together. And uh, I, I just rejoice that I'm not alone, that I'm not trying to survive. I'm not worried about bears eating me or me trying to eat bears or um, whatever else is running around out there. And uh, I've been out in the woods long enough to know that I don't wanna live there. And, uh, but it's, it's, it's so good uh, to see each one of you. How many here, and it's okay for those who have not yet come to Christ, how many here have asked the Lord Jesus to come into your heart and to be your savior? Would you just raise both of your hands? Wow, it's just so good. That's so good. Isn't it, isn't it wonderful? to be able to raise your hands and say, I know Jesus, that he's my savior. He's come into my life, he's transformed me. And um, that we've passed from darkness to light. My sins have been taken away. They've been washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. That I'm saved. New life has begun in Christ. We can say this, the biggest big idea of all time was given a couple weeks ago, that Christ is in me and I'm in Christ. It's such a marvelous thing to think that I'm in Christ and Christ is in me. The Apostle Paul wrote, he said in Galatians 4, 19, my little children for whom I labor in birth again until Christ is formed in you. Here's this understanding, and a lot of it is what we're gonna bring out today. When I come to Christ, I'm fully saved. I'm fully saved. But in another way, I'm just beginning. 
I'm just beginning on my journey of maturity and growing in grace and the knowledge of the Lord. So there's no half saved Christians or partially, partially saved Christians. You ask Jesus to come in, Holy Spirit comes in, you're saved. But what happens is, is that, that there is a ongoing work of Christ, Paul said, being formed in us. In other words, over time, we become far more like Christ than what we once looked like before we came to Christ. It's the transforming grace and the power of God. Um, and as you partner with the Holy Spirit in that work, you'll grow. I've seen people grow incredibly fast in their walk with the Lord. And then I've seen other people, they're taking their time. I'm not sure why, but uh, it's, just, it's just taking more time. They're saved, but it just, and, and so really what I'm talking about is this process. Walking in the Spirit is being, being transformed into the likeness of Jesus. Jesus modeled I didn't share this in the first service. Jesus modeled what it looked like to walk in the Spirit. So his early life, you go to Luke chapter three and you can see that he obeys the Father. He asks John the Baptist, John the Baptist to baptize him. So he's baptized in water and, and, and you could hear the voice from heaven, this is my beloved son, uh, hear him. And the Holy Spirit came and, uh, in the form of a dove. Next thing you go to Luke chapter four and you find Jesus that the Holy Spirit leads, in some translations, that he's driven into the wilderness to be tested by the devil for 40 days. And at the end of that testing, he comes back, and here's what the scripture says in Luke, uh, in Luke chapter four, verses 16 and 17, it says, and he came back in the power of the Holy Spirit. And he stands up in uh, the synagogue, and he stands before the people, and he says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has, he has anointed me to proclaim the gospel, to heal the sick, to cast out demons. The scripture says that all the people out there stood and their, every eye was fastened on him. Was fastened on him. There's something that sets us apart as we yield, as we come to Christ and begin to yield to the Holy Spirit. There's something that the world is fascinated with our love for Jesus and his transforming power in our lives. You know, there's, there's a lot of things that we're promised today that, that when, it, when it turns out that it, it just, it doesn't come out that way. Uh, politicians will often promise us all kinds of things. And then when it gets into it, there's all kinds of excuses, but things don't, Rarely go do, do things get, that happen that they're promised. People will promise things. I, I was watching um, on TV, I was watching this, this commercial. I was very interested in it. Often promises are made that they just don't seem to be what they are. They don't come true. How many have ever purchased vitamins, powder, pills, drinks, <laughs> and, uh, and then been promised that if you, when you take this, you'll have amazing health? be 20 years younger. You can see how I would fall for it. The advertisement begins by talking about this new medical breakthrough in science, and they'll show you this chemical stuff and all this thing, and, and because you have no idea what they're talking about, you're just like, and they'll say you'll have amazing energy, clarity of mind, which is really why I bought this stuff. Boost, <laughs> and it'll, it'll boost and restore your memory. I thought, man, restore my memory, how good would that be? Then I thought, maybe there's just some things I need to forget. <laughs> I love this one. It'll make your wife spin for joy when you walk into the room. <laughs> that by itself was worth the bottle. <laughs> and then, of course, they tagged this on there, and you'll be 20 years younger. <laughs> <sighs> they provided all these exciting testimonies of professionals and lawyers, teachers, washed up athletes, this pill, cream, or drink would revitalize your health, just make you amazing. I read the story of a man who, just after a few days of taking the pill and I was listening to him, he said, my mind became calmer than it had been for 20 years. On and on he went. Everything you need for more mental acuity. Wow. 
and they offered one free bottle. Bottle, listen, I'm not that gullible. <laughs> but I thought, well, if this is a medical breakthrough, why not take advantage? And it's a free bottle, right? The free bottle came in the mail a few weeks later, and a number of weeks passed, and unfortunately, over time, I couldn't remember where I put my breakthrough memory bottle. <laughs> It seemed like I was still in the mid-60s. My wife wasn't breakdancing around me yet, and I hadn't experienced the unusual calm that it seemed that the manufacturers had, had really promised. Clarity, clearly this medical breakthrough that I'd hoped for, and they had promised, was not there. Fortunately, though, it, I don't think it hurt me. I think everyone here over the over 30 can relate to the human body aging and is slowing down a bit, except for Tom Brady. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 3, 11 says, yet God has made everything beautiful for his own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart. King Solomon lived, longed to live forever. When he came to the end of his life, the thing that bothered him most is that all that he had gathered was gonna be given to someone else. At the end of his life, he declared all his vanity. Like King Solomon, the mistakes made by many that, that he had misplaced, the longing for eternity of the soul and having a relationship with God in pleasure or short-term um, enjoyment. Trying to fill the God-shaped void in our soul with pills, creams, powders, drinks, injections doesn't satisfy the deep longing of our souls. It's important though that I say, I do take four mile walks. I try to walk as much as I can in a day. I do take vitamins and, um, and I try to eat healthy. So I'm not in any way speaking against that, kind of laughing. I am just saying that those won't satisfy the deep longing of your soul. Over time, they, no matter what we try to rev up our natural, our body, over time, the Bible says that, and we, and we can, you know, just go to enough funerals, you go like, eventually I'm going there. <laughs> totally, 100% in denial. I'm not going there. <laughs> you can go there, but I'm, no, there's a point until a person wants to die, and after that comes a judgment. So, uh, and, and, I, and I've had people say, well, you know, Listen, I think we can live to 150. But have you seen people in their hundreds? <laughs> I'm going like, unless they can come up with something a lot better of what you look like in your hundreds, I'm ready to go when my assignment's done. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. How many are ready to go home and be with the Lord when your assignment's done and it's gonna be far better than it is right here on the planet, amen? <laughs> So good. Is the tenseness gone, Pastor Jim? Okay, good, good. <laughs> Question. <laughs> what does life look like to have our inward man being renewed every day? What does it look like? What does life look like? We know that this outward man is slowly passing away, but what does it look, for, for, look like for the believer to have your inward man Renewed every day. In other, word, what, in other words, what does it look like to live life in the Spirit? What does it look like to overcome? What does it look like to have things that in your life that once dominated and controlled you? Addictions, habits, things in my secret life that once had such control over me. What does it look like to be free of that and to walk in joy? and peace, and life, and anointing. That's the design for every person who comes to Christ. That's the design for all of us, that we would have life in the Spirit, that we would overcome. You say, well, you know, how's that worked out for you? It has worked out amazing. My testimony is that I have had the Holy Spirit help me overcome all kinds of things in my life. My testimony is that God's grace 
and his goodness is greater than my need. My testimony is that his strength is made perfect in my weakness. That's my testimony. And the word of God, it's sharp and it's quick, and I'm gonna cover some areas today that actually serve to fill us with confidence and grace to overcome. And also, when you understand that the word of God is um, absolutely inerrant, that the Holy Spirit hovered over the word of God when, old, when people of, that over 1,500 years, I think it was over 75 different writers wrote, the Holy Spirit would come upon, upon them and they would write. These are not the ancient scriptures that kind of wear out one generation and just kind of fizzle out. This is the word of God that endures forever. Yes. Hebrews chapter four, verse 12 says that the word of God is living and active and more powerful than a, and, more, and, and sharper than a two-edged sword. So any, never believe the lie that the word of God is somehow something, uh, 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 it's like a suggestion box. <laughs> Go and find something that you like and make it a good suggestion. My encouragement is to dig into the word of God and let the word of God expose whatever's in your life and free you so that you can walk in the spirit and walk in the anointing, the grace, and the goodness of God. How many say amen? amen. Thank you, Jesus. Big idea, because you belong to Christ, Christ's spirit now lives in you. So if you have your Bibles, I'd like you to turn with me to Romans chapter seven, verses 21 through 25, and then we're gonna go into Romans chapter eight, verses one through 17. It's a bit of extended reading, and I'm gonna read along, and the part that you like, just say hallelujah. Let's try it. Okay, that's not nearly loud enough. One. All right. All right. Now, if somebody, you shout hallelujah and somebody else doesn't shout hallelujah, they're going to go back in scripture and find out what he was he shouting hallelujah about. Romans chapter 7, verse 21 says this. I have discovered this principle of life. Now, Paul is setting up, you have, to go into Romans 8, you need to go back at least to this part of the passage to know what Paul is talking about in Romans 8. And he says, I've discovered this principle of life. Because it's a principle of life doesn't mean that it's right. <laughs> there could be principles of life that it just seems like it's a principle. But it doesn't make it right. The reason I'm cleaning it up is I had a person come up after the whole message and said to me, I just like verse, chapter seven, verse 23, and I was thinking like, oh no. I didn't explain, like, this principle actually isn't the thing that's to govern your life. So I gotta say that out of the gate. I discovered this principle in life that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. So that could be a principle for some, but that shouldn't be our principle. <laughs> it's okay, you can just say hallelujah. <laughs> Verse 22 says, I love God, I love God's law with all my heart, but there's another power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Oh, what a miserable, per miserable person I am. Don't say hallelujah. <laughs> oh, oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Thank God. Hallelujah. Thank God. Hallelujah. Thank God. Hallelujah. The answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. So you see how it is. In my mind, I really want to obey God's law, but because of my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. So then we get Romans 8, 1. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And because you belong to him, Hallelujah. 
The power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. This is really good. It works so much better than the first service, I can tell you. Uh, the, amen? <laughs> The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end. Say an end. An end. end. To sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. So that's what communion is all about. That's what communion, we, we, we remember what Jesus did in his body and his blood. He did this so that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us, who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the spirit. So that's describing what life in the spirit looks like. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things, but those who are controlled, and a, and a better word that I think is, is given in the NIV is governed, and those who are governed by the Holy Spirit think about the things that please the Spirit. Amen. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death, but letting the spirit control or govern your mind leads to life and peace. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's law and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. Yes, sobering. And so it's it's part of it's like we're going through just asking a question, is there any area of my life that is still controlled by an old sinful nature. And now, and knowing that the Holy Spirit is in you, and you just access, you just say, so Holy Spirit, I don't like that. Often when I'm tempted to do something or watch something, when I'm alone in a motel room by myself, and I'm being tempted about something, I'll say, so Holy Spirit, what do you think about this temptation? Here's what I'm being tempted to do. And I'll just say it out loud to the Holy Spirit. I can tell you it works every time. Understanding that the Holy Spirit is with me and working in me and giving me the power to overcome and not being ashamed of what I'm being tempted by because being tempted by something isn't the sin. And he doesn't blush. Oh, Wes, that's sick, dude. (laughs) Never says that. He says, no, Wes, I'm breaking you free from that. I'm giving you power to overcome. You access me so you're walking in the spirit. You're listening to the Holy Spirit so you can overcome. I love to say like every time it works, but sometimes I don't ask the Holy Spirit. I just go ahead and do it. And then the Holy Spirit goes, bummer. (laughs) And I'm being being not condemned, but being convicted. And I go back and I say, so Holy Spirit, would you forgive me? I yielded to, to temptation. I thought or did or whatever. And I ask you to forgive me. And here's what the scripture says. And when you, Confess your sins. He is faithful and just to do what? And to? From all unrighteousness. Isn't that good? Come on. That's like four hallelujahs. Wow, thank you, Lord. Verse nine, but you are not controlled by your sinful nature. I'll try it again. But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled or governed by the Holy Spirit, the Spirit, if you have the Spirit of God living in you. And remember that those who do not have the Spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to him at all. Verse 10 says, and Christ lives within you. So even though your body will die because of sin, 
body grows old. Listen to this. The spirit gives you life because you have been made right with God. Wow. 2 Corinthians 4.16 says this. Therefore, we do not lose heart even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. That's so good. It's a serious hallelujah. Verse 11, too late. Verse 11, (laughs) the spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised uh, Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal body by the same spirit living in you. Therefore, because of that, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. I love that. Being tempted by something, something's going on, and then now I go, oh, I've been, Christ is transforming. His power's working in me. I'm, I'm not gonna do that. I just, I, I, I'm free from that choice. I'm not gonna watch that. I'm not gonna participate in that. It just sounds like gossip. I'm just gonna choose not to repeat it. I'm not obligated to. Here's the good news. You don't have to sin anymore. Try it over here. You don't have to sin anymore. Oh yeah, it brings God glory. No, it doesn't. God already has all the glory and all the praise. Sinning, when I choose to sin, there's always a level of uh, imprisonment that comes with that. And, I, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm no longer obligated to make those choices because Christ has freed me from the power of sin. Right. Holy Spirit, take that word, make that alive to us. Verse 12, therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. For if you live by its dictates, you will die. But if, though, but if through the power of the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. Yeah, so I'm not gonna go through life just walking in darkness. Are there times that I have trouble with sin? Yes. Are there times that I fail? Yes. But the closer I get to Jesus, the more confident that I become in his word, in his presence, in his power. The more I look like Jesus, the closer, the more that I'm walking in the spirit, the less of the flesh, sinful nature has any hold on me. As you walk with Jesus, you're designed to sin less. One hallelujah. As you're, as you're walking with Jesus, the design is, is that you sin less. Isn't that good news? Why? Because you're captivated with a person who is the savior of your soul. You have a relationship with the spirit of God who's transforming you from the inside out. You see things in a much different perspective because the Holy Spirit is powerfully working in you. Oh, thank you, Lord. For all who are led by the spirit are children of God. A balcony, I have not heard a peep of you, out of you up there. I'll do it again just for you. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. Wow. Though I do not see you, I believe you're up there. I mean, I want to see you, it's just dark. Verse 15 says, so you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Can you, can you just, I know Pastor Jim and several of the other pastors, they get to take this text and other things and they're going to just, don't miss these next few weeks. I just encourage you. It's gonna be so, so awesome. Look at this. So you've not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you've received God's spirit. Say God's spirit. God's spirit. 
when he adopted you as his own? Wow. And now we call him. So I think we ought to just stand up as God's children and let's give him a great big praise offering. Yeah, thank you, Lord. We belong to you. We belong to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> For his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. Guess what? I'm a child of God. Top that one. And your response is, guess what? I'm a child of God. We are children of God. We're joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We're kings and priests. You're not defined by a sin that is, you're, you're really challenged with. You're defined by the fact that you belong to God. You are his child. And he, the Holy Spirit, is transforming you. And since we are his children, we are his heirs. That makes everyone who loves Jesus wealthy. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we share in his glory, we must also suffer. We must also share in his suffering. So the big idea is because you belong to Christ, Christ's spirit now lives in you. Number one, power and control of the sinful nature is defeated. The old power, the sin nature that once ruled within me, that warred against my mind and my thoughts, Jesus Christ defeated on the cross once and for all. Jesus came to destroy the works of darkness. The old sinful nature that once dominated and controlled my life has now lost its grip. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Jesus. The weight of shame and guilt and punishment has been lifted off of me. Christ has come, whom the Son has set free now is free indeed. The power of my old sin is broken. If you just close your eyes with me, right where you're at. And I want you just to, we're gonna do some practice. I want you just to breathe this over yourself. The power of any sin just go ahead and say that just softly into your breath. The power of any sin is broken off of me. Yeah, the power to control me is broken off of me. Sin will no longer have dominion in my life. Yeah, I'm free. <laughs> That's so good. Worship team can go ahead and come. Number two, presence of the life-giving spirit is transforming me. I am free from an old nature, from an old mindset. And now Holy Spirit has given me a new mindset, a new mindset. It's the mind of Christ. Those are dominated by their sinful nature think about sinful things, but those who are controlled or governed by the Holy Spirit think of things about pleasing God. The wrong mindset is a mind that is controlled by an old sin nature. The right mindset is a mind that is influenced and governed by the Holy Spirit that has the mind of Christ. When you're with me, here's a thing that you can notice. When you're with your friends and with people and you're spending time in your family, if you never talk about the things of God, there's something wrong. If you talk about everything else, really nice talk, good talk. It's so good to get together. You know, we watch 50 programs of Hallmark and I don't know, what, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> but if you never talk about God in your home, if you never talk about God with your family, then ask the Holy Spirit. Say, so the Holy Spirit, you're, you're in me. You're, you're the biggest part of me that's causing me to transform. Would you come and fill my life. Would you come and fill my conversation? When I come home, you will see it. When I come home, I walk up to my house and very often I just lift up my hands. 
I don't care about neighbors or anything. I lift up my hands and I just bless the presence and the peace and the grace and the goodness of God on our house and on our property, on all who come. I praise, I lift up my hands to our neighborhood. I just declare God's goodness, his favor and his kindness on my neighbors. I'm always trying to talk to my neighbors and friends about Jesus. Guy across the street from me, he's getting closer and closer to coming. Just a little bit of a while ago, he said, my wife and I just the other day were talking about coming to your church at Life Church 7. It's, it's been a seven-year project. He's right across the street. It's the goodness of God that keeps him. This life in the Spirit. I have never had a conversation with him that would have led him away from Jesus. Because why? Because we want to walk in the spirit and people are the prize. Number three, you can stand with me. It's a promise of a new nature and a new identity. I love Romans 8, 1 through 7. For all who are led by the spirit are children of God. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you've received a spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba Father. For his spirit joins our spirit. Say his spirit spirit. has joined my spirit. spirit. And I'm a child of God. And since we are children, we are his heirs. That's a big hallelujah. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we share in his glory, we will suffer in this life. So you've been given a new nature. All who belong to Christ have a new nature. All who belong to Christ have a new identity. Once I was lost, now I'm found. Once I was a slave, now I'm free. Once I was a sinner, now I'm a son and daughter. Once I was an orphan, now I'm God's favorite child. Heirs with Christ, joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Would you lift your hands and would you welcome Holy Spirit to come in a fresh new way and touch you today.